this new beginning, this most solemn week of the year, when we remember the passion and death of Jesus. I ask you to make this journey with me this morning through the days that lead to his death and resurrection. But I ask that we make this journey together through the eyes of his mother Mary. The journey begins with a triumphal march into Jerusalem. I know that there's no place in the scriptures that places Mary on the scene on that first Palm Sunday. But we know that she sometimes traveled with Jesus, and we also know that she was accustomed to going to Jerusalem for the feasts and the festivals in Jerusalem. And we know that she was there at the time of the crucifixion, so I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that she was witness to this triumphal event. And can you imagine what must have been going through her mind at that time, with all the throng shouting out in praise of her son and saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Could this be the fulfillment of the promise that the angel Gabriel made her so many years ago when he said to her, You shall bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be called Great, and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David. Is this where everything that has happened since his birth is leading to? Is his day of victory at hand? As much as she would like to think that, I think in her heart that she knew that this wasn't true. She, because she knew her son. She knew this was not the kind of kingdom that he had been proclaiming, that his kingdom was one of compassion, forgiveness, and not of power. And she knew, too, the hostility of the Pharisees of you know, the religious authority and how they have been trying to trap Jesus into saying or doing something for which they could arrest him. So her heart would be filled with pride and with joy, seeing her son so loudly praised. But that joy was shattered by the uncertainty and the fear of where all this attention might be. Then there were those few days between Palm Sunday and Holy Thursday that I think the best be called is here. Jesus could no longer appear in public unless he was surrounded by a large crowd for fear that the Jewish authorities would take him away. And the dialogue between him and the Pharisees was becoming more and more bitter. And Mary could almost see the hatred and the malice that was jelling in their hearts. The whole atmosphere seemed to be coming to a boiling point. And when she looked upon her son during these days, she could only look upon him with ever-increasing worry and concern. And then we come to Holy Thursday. Again, there is no mention in the Bible that Mary was present at the Last Supper. But I can't imagine a Jewish mother not being somehow involved in the Seder meal. Perhaps in the preparation or the serving, or maybe even present at the table itself. And she would have heard the gravity of her son's voice as he spoke his last words to the Apostles. And she would have sensed the fear and the despondency in the apostles' hearts. When Jesus and the apostles left for the Garden of Gethsemane, I don't know if Mary went with them or not, but you better believe that unlike Peter, James, and John, she didn't fall asleep in that hour of prayer. Then comes the most difficult day of all, the day of suffering. How she must have fretted when her son was whisked away in the dark and taken away first to the Sanhedrin and then to Pilate himself. How she must have cringed when she heard the crowd shouting for his execution. Are these the same people who were acclaiming him as their king just a few days ago? What did Jesus do to them in the meantime that so changed their hearts? In my former parish, we used to present what was called an oratorio that told the story of the passion of Jesus in song. The person who sang the part of Mary was a young high school student who had this beautiful, soulful voice. And I don't know how she could ever sing this song without breaking into tears. It goes, Is this the child I raised? Is this the son I knew? Is this the boy I had why can't you love him too? She just couldn't understand how someone who had only compassion and healing could be so viciously despised. 
and Mother Glory must have been when she saw her son returning to the Victoria after being scourged to see his body bloody, beaten, buried alive. And being a witness to that tortuous walk up Calvary Hill, seeing him stumble time after time, how she must have wished that it was she who was carrying that load. Then the crucifixion itself, the nails through his hands and feet, the struggle for each and every breath. How the words, Eloi, Eloi, Lema Sabatani, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Must have pierced her through her heart. Yet she remained standing, watching at the foot of the cross until he breathed his last. Was there ever any greater sorrow? Was there ever any greater pain? You know, there are times in our lives when we are burdened with loads that seem impossible to bear. A rejection, a divorce, an illness, a death. And we wonder how we can ever go on, how we can keep on struggling, even when victory seems to be beyond our reach. That's when we turn to Mary at the foot of the cross. For within her was that fire of trust in God that allowed her to say, let it be done to me according to your will. We have been gifted with that same flame, that same spark of love that allows us to bear all things, to believe all things, to hope all things, to endure all things. Sometimes it may be only a flicker in our hearts, seemingly overwhelmed by the pains and the sorrows of this life. But we look to Mary because we know that her pain and sorrow was turned to joy at the resurrection. And that is where our journey ends. It's what at the resurrection, and that's what the resurrection is. Resurrection is God's promise to us that there is a plan, a purpose for all this pain. That on the third day, our sorrow will be turned into joy. But until that day of our own resurrection, we stand with Mary at the foot of the cross, and she stands with us at the, at the foot of our cross. And we pray, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy our life, our sweetness, our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of thee. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <laughs>